just two guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Chad on Score North and scorenorth.com. And going to that final play, you know, when I saw it, the only thing I could think of, I was like, uh, he must have didn't know how, how you know, what the, what down it was. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I haven't heard his you know explanation um, about it uh, as of yet. But on the side, I was like, it was just it just took me back, you know, because I was just shocked that, you know, we threw the ball, you know, three yeah. and we needed eight, you know. So I, I really don't know, you know, what went into that, you know, how, you know, that decision came about him throwing the ball, you know, that short. Patrick Peterson on his All Things Covered podcast, and I will say so that the Cousins Crusaders don't completely freak out, he did also say that Cousins is a top 10 quarterback. You can win a lot of games with Kirk Cousins, and he spent plenty of time talking about the defensive shortcomings as well. Yep. So for, for all the people I saw yesterday, Chris Thomason was the first to transcribe this and put it out on social media. Maybe he should look at the d- – he's one to talk. It's like he talked about all of it. He was asked about the fourth and eight. That's a really candid answer. He thought Kirk forgot how many downs there were, and he was taken aback on the sidelines. So before we get to feedback, what did you you make of that? If you played for the team and you're a veteran in the playoffs, 13-win season, before you leave the state, hell, in my case, before I leave the sideline, wouldn't you want to know the answer to that question in retrospect? Yeah, how did we throw a three yard pass on a fourth and eight? Like if I'm a if I'm Pat P, I'm getting that damn answer to give Bryant McFadden. Are people making too big of a deal out of that play? No. That play is an enormous, enormous step back to Kirk being who Kirk used to be. And O'Connell somehow empowered him there. Now keep in mind, O'Connell empowered Kirk mentally, I think, the entire year. But there were a, a lot of plays. Go back and watch film, guys. We, we talked about this. There were a lot of plays where O'Connell, early in the season especially, did not leave guys way short of the sticks because of exactly that play. Yeah. In that play, I mean, and and we've seen it a thousand times now, when you have a tight end who's chipping and then releases on fourth and eight and your season's on the line and that's your final play, um, that's an enormous blunder. And for anyone who says, well, what's he going to do? He's got to throw it up. He's got to throw it into KJ or Je- or Jefferson. I don't care whom, but he's got to take a chance. Yep. Like, if it all breaks down, what you do is you launch that football towards Osborne, and if it gets picked or falls in- incomplete, you say, well, it broke down. It's just interesting that that – because you want you, you kind of wonder, well, is you're, wa- you're watching the game on TV or you're watching from the stadium – as a fan or a media member and you got your own thoughts and then other people that actually know what they're talking about, like Kurt Warner or trenches, Alex Boone, Jeremiah Cyril's NFL players, Patrick Peterson. And everyone kind of has a similar opinion, which is, you know, maybe not, maybe it wasn't the most amazing play design and there was a little pressure, but he still had like three seconds to throw and that's what happened. Um, so this is feedback Friday where we go through your comments, questions, concerns, critiques, Whatever you want to send us, and we try to get to as many as possible on both Mackie and Judd and Purple Daily on Fridays. Just kind of turn the show over to you guys. And uh, the first question is about Kirk and his age from Alan Fenske here via the Score North app. can always send us stuff to the Score North app. You'll probably file this under useless statistics, but here's a Super Bowl breakdown. Super Bowl wins by age group of quarterbacks. So he has taken... What have there been 56 Super Bowls or whatever? And uh, he has put them into categories of how old the quarterback is. So 31 of the Super Bowls have been won by quarterbacks under 30. 17 of them have been won by quarterbacks between 31 and 34. Or 31 and 35. And then 8 only have been won by quarterbacks who are 35 and older. Of that older group, so there's been eight of them. Tom Brady has three. John Elway has two. Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Johnny Unitas. These are all Hall of Fame dudes. All with one. So what are your thoughts on on Kirk's age? 
I know we've spent the last five years dissecting his play. Yeah. But now that his play, his play, I think, has ascended in many key areas in the five years he's been a Viking. Mm -hmm. But his age is also ascending, and he's going to be 35 years old like this summer. So what do you, what do you make of is is he too old? What what do you make of his age and how that factors into their decision making here? Well, I think you have to tie it uh, together uh, very firmly with his contract and, and his cap hit, right? Because like if Kirk if Kirk said what you want, hey, you know what? I'll play for cheap because I'm getting old. He'd be like, okay, uh, but he's not going to. And so I really think the more I think about this now, personally, I would let him play the contract out. I think they're going to sign him to an extension through 2024 and move on in 2025. And I think that that's probably fair from an age point of, of view. I just think that we've also gotten into because of guys like Brady, especially Rogers to a certain degree as well, though we've gotten into this, like, Oh, quarterbacks can play into their forties now. Well, that's not true of most people. And so I think his age is an important factor. I think the clock is ticking. I am on record as saying this. I don't think Kirk Cousins is ever going to win a Super Bowl, though. So, yeah. like, I mean, forget the age. I just don't think, and I think the last play on Sunday, I mean, that was a first-round playoff game, you guys. That was a first-round playoff game. And that check down at fourth and eight for three yards is an inexcusable young man's mistake. So, look, he made strides. He and O'Connell had a good working relationship. He did some really good things in the regular season, uh, but that didn't translate. And I think the age is a factor, but I think it's only one of ma of many factors, which includes his play and, of course, um, his contract. Hmm. You think he's too old, Dex? He's too. He's old. He's he's, he's too old. He's too old. Look, all of those guys. And by the way, Drew Brees was thirty when he won a Super Bowl, so I, I'm I'm not sure uh, where he fell in with the thirty five plus category when you were reading that. Uh, list off the top. Oh, um, maybe maybe this whole premise is wrong now. But but I just like trust this, the research that you guys sent hey, via yeah, email. You're Burgundy here. You are Our literally reading the prompter. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're, you're reading the prompter. Checking department. Where are they? But but those 35 plus guys, Peyton's, Brady's, etc. Like those are generational, bona fide Hall of Fame quarterbacks. And I know statistically you can make a little look at Kirk statistics, but dude, Kirk Cousins is not on the same level career wise as Tom Brady or Peyton Manning, or perception, and any of those those things. So I understand why those guys were able to win Super Bowls at that age. Um, I thought this year was the best possible chance and best path for Kirk to win a Super Bowl. And now all of that is for, for not because you lost in the wild card round, and I just think the path is going to be incredibly more difficult. Next year, it's not guaranteed you win 13 games. It's not guaranteed you have a wild card round. It's not guaranteed the conference gonna be, is going to be weaker again. So... I think this was this was the year. Like I, I really, my hottest take wasn't just a hot take thrown against the wall and see what sticks. I, I legitimately stand by. I think the 2022 Vikings had Kirk Cousins on the best path to win a Super Bowl, and now I, I'm back to square one with them, which is he can't, he can't win a Super Bowl. It's and it becomes harder the older. I, I just went back and I, I think I'm correcting Allen here correctly. Brady has four of them over the Got of it. the eight by 35 and older quarterbacks. Brady has four. Elway has two. Peyton Manning has one, and then Johnny Unitas, ah, I'll trust, right. has one. Bree, you're right. Breeze was not, so. Uh, Alan, you're you're wrong about Drew Brees, but we appreciate the, the rest of the research here. So I also did a search here, just curiosity, because it does seem like it's easier lately, like the last five or ten years, for older quarterbacks to kind of stick around. I mean, Philip Rivers was still slinging it at like age 38, 39. You know, he's kind of in that Kirk Cousins tier. We know what Tom Brady has been. I don't think you can just say, well, Tom Brady's doing it. LeBron James is doing it. Therefore, those guys are insane. Right. And have, especially in Tom Brady's case, Tom Brady has sacrificed family for football, basically. Yep. Think about that. Yeah, with mm -hmm. descending talent, too. That's the thing is he's sort of sick. Kind. I mean, kind of I mean, this year, talent. he gave up yeah. Giselle. He, but, I mean, oh, okay, if Brady was still 40 – then you know what? Sorry, Giselle, I'm gone. But what? he gave, but he gave up the family this season, and he's not that good anymore. And I think it's possible that that relationship may have been on the rocks long before sure. the public found out. But, but I've I found in NFL history here. Yeah, in NFL history, at least going back to like the merger, 
16 different quarterbacks, 35 and older, have th- and and I, I'll specify this. Actually, I, this list starts in 1991 with Warren Moon. I don't know if he was the first to do it or if I just like did a. I did this like three weeks ago and I forgot about it. So I, this is a link that I saved. So since 1991, at least 16 different quarterbacks, age 35 and older, have thrown for 4,000 yards in a season, which is just kind of the benchmark I used as like, are you still a really really good high end quarterback past the age of 35? 16 different quarterbacks. So it, you know, doesn't happen a lot. Yeah. But Kirk could reasonably fall. And the way he takes care of his body, he's been super durable. He had a good season this last year. He could pretty easily have multiple more effective seasons left in the tank. You know, Rodgers is still pretty effective at 39. Matt Ryan was still throwing for, you know, almost 5,000 yards at age 35, 36. So, um. I think he's got at least a couple more years left. The question is, how much do you pay for those years? And do those years come in purple? And I don't I don't know where they're leaning with that. So. I am, um, from what they've shown, I am willing to bet he's here through at least 24. Yeah, that's interesting, unless, man. Unless they say, we, we'd like to sign you to a one-year extension through 24, and they're like, no, it's got to be three years. Then you got a problem. If Kirk's camp says three. Yeah, yes, yes. If the Cousins camp says, oh, no, no, it's got to go to 26. Has he said how long he wants to play for? He just wants to be a Viking. He just loves being a Viking, he says. He he has not said. He has not put a years on it ever. He's never said like 40 or 42. No, no. He's just talked about the fact that he loves it here, and he Mm -hmm. loves how the checks go through it every other Friday. Um, Let's see here. He just works here. Uh, (laughs) David Brazel has some reckless speculation for us. We always love that. Speculation. Lamar Jackson seems like he could be unhappy in Baltimore. What do you guys think about how Lamar would function in a KOC offense with Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson to throw to? KOC is clearly a creative offensive mind and a unique talent like Lamar could be worth exploring. What do you think of that notion? Mm. Well, first of all, what's the price tag? Just in compensation back to Baltimore because it would be enormous. And the the price tag. The second thing is the price tag on Lamar Jackson. And, and so here's my concern just about him. He is starting to get hurt and the way, and I don't think he's got another gear to shift it down to change himself. Yeah. I'm, I love I'm his, honest. his I'm healthy honest. talent. His healthy talent is fun yeah. as hell to watch. Um, and we, we can certainly talk about accuracy and things like that, but I'm just saying from a availability standpoint, you know, cause Someday when Kirk is gone, we will miss that. Mm-hmm. Dude, I, I feel like I have personally, I have such a clear vision of what I, as a fan of football, as a guy with a microphone for some reason, what I want teams to do with quarterbacks. There are like five or six guys in the league at any given time, roughly. Joe Burrow is going to be one of them. Patrick Mahomes is that I would just pay whatever the market rate needs to be. Whatever I need to pay to have Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, previously Tom Brady, you know, whatever that bin looks like every every so often, right? Yep. I will pay whatever it takes to keep those guys on my team or to get those guys. Yep. Everybody else I move on from if they want to make more money than is going to help my team build a roster. And unfortunately, Lamar Jackson, former MVP, the fact that he's starting to break down a little bit and he's he wants to make money among the top quarterbacks in the league, I don't think he's on that top tier. He's like on the second tier. I just say no and I'm cuz it's going to cripple your franchise. Not to the point where you're going to be a bad team, but to the point where you're going to be stuck in Vikingsville, which is mediocrity. Yeah. So I he's going to get hurt teams, more. You, you got to be willing to just say it was a great five-year run. We, we did some nice, fun things. You won an MVP, but it will hurt our franchise if we give you $40 million a year and have to build a 53-man roster around you. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So uh, Charles Steidler says, after listening to Quasi and KOC talk for 30 minutes and effectively tell me nothing, I'd like to give you guys my power rankings for Minnesota sports masters of grandiloquence. Oh, Whoa. love this. 
Number five, Rocco Baldelli. We'll rarely tell you anything, but we'll say words that are positive. Yep. Number four, Gerson Rosas, previously, said a lot of things that sounded important but weren't real. Friend of the show. He built a great roster, by the way. Built a playoff mm -hmm. roster last year. KOC and Quasi, intention, foundation, evaluation, coordination, communication, professional <laughs> word soup from these guys. I love yep. that. That's yep. great. Quasi, Quasi, real That's great. good. Yep. Derek Falvey and Thad Levine. Well, what we can tell you is, continues on to say nothing. <laughs> well, what we yeah. can tell you is, Falvey says nothing. we are exploring all options. Yeah. We are constantly evaluating every part of our baseball club. Yep. And number one, sure. Rick Spielman. The guy could dodge a question with ease and make it sound like he gave you a genuine answer. Slick Rick. Hmm. Well, he would actually laugh mid-answer. Because he knew he was bamboozling you, and he knew that you knew, and and he wanted you to laugh with him. Who's the best at taking a question and turning it into an answer that has nothing to do with the question? Crazy's pretty Rick. good at that. Rick, Rick, Rick was really good at that. Um. Well, Brett Favre is pretty good. Well, at but that. Brett Favre would then get would, he he would take an innocuous question and break news. And then ask more questions. Yeah. But like Falvey tries to take questions and turn them to yeah. his, to what he wants. Falvey. I, feel like I think, I think it's probably Falvey. Falvey is, Falvey always brings it back. I always envision guys like these new age. I know I have to be up there for 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. How do I, how do I get up there for a half hour and say nothing? I always envision them going back behind the curtain afterwards and like high fiving <laughs> the PR director. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> nice job guys. Oh God, yeah. You right know, before they come out for the media, they all put their hands. They get in like a pregame. They yep. all put their say hands nothing. in the middle. Okay, on one, two, three. Say nothing. Say nothing. <laughs> I miss Gerson. I, the only thing I wish, I wish Gerson had had been himself, totally. Just a guy that didn't really have a care in the world. Just an ass. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but 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 instead of this whole family thing, just be be like, you know what, guys? I am an old school executive. You know, I, still... I smoke in the office. I drink in the office. <laughs> uh, I do whatever I want. Do more than that in the office sometimes. <laughs> yeah, literally. Uh, he still peeks my Instagram stories once in a while. I should see if he wants hey, to come um, back on the show. He used to be a was... good friend of the show. Yeah. He was great with us. We should get him back. We never had yeah. an issue with Gers. Uh, no, I, hell no. I, I had a friend who said he saw him at a local restaurant within the last, like, three or four months, so he still frequents Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Sanchez says, I understand the negativity of the week given the playoff loss, but we have to stop thinking like losers do. We need to have yeah. a conversation about how things can go right next year instead of go worse. The offense is largely back, and the production behind Jefferson that we stand to lose can be made up by fresher, younger players. Kirk will finally have some continuity, and I think year two is his chance to to show his highest potential. We should not extend him until he shows that, however. As for the defense, what about it? There's nowhere to go but up. Sure, maybe we win only 10 or 11 games instead of 13, but I probably trust a team that can do that on a first-place schedule more than this year's team. I agree with a lot of this stuff. If they are to, they're going to kind of nuke the defense, but how much worse can it really get? Right. And the offense, if they were to replace Thielen with... Literally, like, maybe Jalen Naylor gets more snaps or something, or they draft a wide receiver. A first-round draft pick wide receiver would be really interesting. But it does feel like the team can get better, but the results might be worse because of close game regression, yes. tougher schedule, right? So you, maybe you do see a 10 or 11 win team that's actually better built for a playoff run if they do it right. Defensively, I want a fast, swarming, aggressive unit that's what swarming. i warming swarming i want him to be swarming Football. buzzing around i want him to be swarming to the ball i want if the ball hits the ground i want everything returned to the end zone i want i want that tomlin aggressiveness back that was my favorite i love the aggressiveness of is of, tomlin like, the one that started like vikings players for years in training camp if they if they picked up Tomlin a, started that they had to run to the end zone basically yes uh, okay which i actually liked oh, man. Mm -hmm. that's great Whenever Judd dropped his notebook, get a pick it up, run to the end zone. Yep. Sean Jensen would pick it up and just take off of the end zone, and then I, he would. And then my scoops would all be gone. <laughs> uh, Robbie Bruzik says, of all the moves you guys propose, keeping Harrison Smith from a roster construction standpoint is the one that makes the least amount of sense to me. 
safety of all positions you talked about is one where we seem to have at least a little bit of depth and have seen some glimpses of some promise from younger guys. Yeah, Metellus, Bynum, more two years ago than last year. Yeah. Lewis seen. You guys also repeatedly talk about safety not being a position of value, so why is that the one position you're willing to overpay and restructure for an old guy? You guys seem to be talking out of both sides of your mouth when it comes to that thought process. I, I won't fight this. We're, maybe what we're doing is saying, well, you got to keep one of them. Well, also, but, what's the... But, but if you're going to... If you have to flat out cut him, it's a fairly large cap hit. That's my correct. point. Yep. So we're, we're essentially saying we'd rather restructure than cut or ride the contract well, out. So. As, as I recall, the entire conversation was th- that we started out going through um, the veteran players that might be gone is I said I would restructure Thielen and Dex, and you said, no, 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 cut him, which is a fairly large cap hit um, in, in the dead cap. And then, then we got to Smith, and it was the same exact thing. And look, I mean, the one thing here is I'm all for cutting players. You guys know that. I love to cut players. But the dead money accumulates. Like, you can't just be, be, be like, okay, now take that on. Now take that kit. At some point in time, you got to think through this. So Thielen and Smith are very costly to cut. And I think you you guys thought, and so I, of course, was forced into it, just like I was to leave the uh, jo- or the Colts game. I was wow, forced into mm-hmm. getting on board with you guys. And so we decided that they couldn't also absorb the dead cap hit on Harrison Smith. Yeah, I mean, some of this is just, okay, you could just get rid of everyone, but if, like in Harrison Smith's case, the contract they signed him to, you're almost better off just, because you're going to eat right. so much money anyways, just keep him for another year. And It was a dumb contract. Like, that. that's the yeah. problem, is he never should have been given this contract. Yeah. And he's still good. He's just not the player that he was a, a few years ago. Amen. So, um, Dex, why don't you tell the audience here yeah. how they can have a a more fun time than even usual watching football this weekend. Yeah, we got some divisional round weekend. It's actually my favorite weekend of the football calendar year. Not week one, not Super Bowl, not conference championship, divisional round, top four, top four. It's my favorite time of mm. the NFL calendar year. And uh, but let, let's show off this one, though, because you can do a little mixed sport entry. Like our guy Ryan did a little four-pick parlay, Judd. He took a Mark andre Fleury and Matt Boldy saves and then or, uh, or saves and shots, yep. and he put it with Geno Smith and Trevor Lawrence passing oh, wow. yards. He, he, you know, he rode those overs. He mixed it up a little wild action with some playoff action. You can do the same thing in underdog fantasy this weekend. And we join with promo code SCORE, S-K-O-R. They'll match your first deposit up to 100 bucks. Go download the underdog fantasy app. Yes, go Football. right now. Go do it. Go do it. 